Hello, it's a Sunday and very sunny and this is very shady here. The spotlight is a light which is very versatile and can be used in many combinations. In order to start our experiment with the spotlight, let's create a plane. Scale it up because it's going to be our ground. Now let's introduce one or two pieces of geometry. For example, right mouse click here, spherical harmonics. And uh, when you go to this tab here, you can find the random button and have a really sophisticated piece of geometry here. Uh, we'll do the same again with maybe an ultra shape and uh, randomize it, randomize it twice and move it up like this and rotate it just a little bit to have more a little bit more uh, detail here. Now um, the spotlight comes into the scene. We leave this scene gray by the way. Gray is sometimes with Arnold it's, it's always quite it has a certain kind of elegance really. Um, so let's create under create a light a spotlight. A spotlight sits here in the center of the scene and now let's briefly press the spacebar which brings us this four view here and go to any of the other win windows by pressing the spacebar again and with this uh, spotlight selected we press and hold the spacebar now which brings up the hotbox and here under panels you find look through selected there are several other ways to get to that but i think this is the fastest one look through selected shows us the view through our light this is, by the way, possible with all kinds of lights, even a directional light which doesn't come from a specific point, but you can uh, determine and uh, adjust the direction of the uh, parallel light, of, uh, in this case, with this method. So let's go a little bit away here for, from the scene, and actually we can put on shading so we see basically where the light works on. And I think I want to cover the whole left object and only parts of the right object. So that's basically all I want. And um, now I press the space bar briefly and briefly again here. And now I'm back to my scene and I can render it with Arnold. It will be almost black. And that is because, and this frustrates many people I guess, this is because the uh, intensity of the light is 1, which sounds okay, but uh, in this context it isn't. And now check out the number I'm typing in here, because I'm used to this light, 200. And now the light starts to uh, be visible here and working in the scene. We, um, well, let's pump it up to 400 actually. We have two sections to deal with. One is the general for all kinds of renderers, the Maya renderer for example, this section here. Uh, and I'll come back to the section in a second. Uh, and you have the Arnold section. I'm going down to the Arnold section right now because I need more exposure. So the exposure is right here and now I have more light. So let's forget about this for a second now. And here we have something called no decay. This has no effect because Arnold uh, took over already and uh, introduced a decay of cubic, which is the natural light. So you don't have to care about this. Uh, here is, of course, the light color. And here is the cone angle. It makes it wider or less wide, like this. This is an important one. The penumbra angle makes a soft rim of the light, like this. I sometimes like to keep it like this because in, in nature it's a, even with a laser a beam it would not be as sharp as it comes here by default. And the drop off uh, is a similar effect. Uh, it starts in the middle and uh, it's a very nice effect uh, which you of course like everything here you can animate as well. 0 0.1 maybe is a good value. Uh, now we move down here to the Arnold section of that light. Here you have the exposure and the samples and the radius. Now the radius, and for that purpose I think I'll go choose another angle. 
and actually I reposition the light a little bit, make it more flat like this. Okay, so we have this perspective view now with the with the shadows. The shadows are very sharp, and you can make them soft, which in, involves uh, quite an increase in rendering time by raising the radius from zero to a value like what is it now 4.444 so we have a soft shadow here and for rendering and uh, uh, quality you can pump up the samples too which uh, give you less graininess now it casts shadows if you switch that off it does not cast shadows the shadow has a certain density and uh, other things like the lens uh, it does have a lens now you see uh, like in a real spotlight uh, and before we leave this whole topic it's just a big teaser really for you I guess uh, if you've never worked with the with a, with any kind of light modification I only use the lights in the default settings you can go here and either click on add or click here and you have the selection of four kinds of uh, filters for the lights and uh, one filter which is qu quite standard is the gobo the gobo introduces just any kind of geometry which modifies your light so we need to double click it we see this odd crossed out thing here which doesn't matter for us really and now we need to uh, map the uh, the color basically the slide map which is letting light through or not and uh, I like the grid as you know so this is our grid <laughs> gobo now the grid gobo is working quite all right this is the light friends this is not a shader which is uh, put on some kind of geometry it is uh, straightforward uh, a gobo let's undo this Z and instead of the gobo or we can leave it here it's just not active we add a light blocker now what's that supposed to do well it's this object here which landed in the center of the scene probably the center of the scene let's try to find where it is go back to the render view and we don't see any effect here it's supposed to block the light at this place at this specific area we need to raise the density and now you can see the light blocker working it's uh, currently here right here and we can scale it of course so it blocks the light at this specific place where it would normally hit the object uh, it's a very sophisticated uh, kind of light blocking system which you can use for special effects for example for creating blinds but basically to create blinds and you always can com combine these things here um, when you create blinds uh, you better use um, a grid as we've done before so let's do this as a final thing we stick to the gobo and we map it with a grid can add some noise so if the blinds are shaking a little bit in the wind much more noisy it's always a light effect so with this I'll leave you alone now we have a light blocker we have uh, gobo settings we can have a barn door effect and this is uh, only touching on the surface of the spotlight hello police or what is it Oh, it's an ambulance. Bye-bye.